So after all the disastrous decisions the United States has made over the decades and decades, it doesn't stop. Now the United States government is practically working against threatening and bullying President Xiomara Castro in Honduras. The United States is being hostile and opposing Xiomara Castro just like they were to her husband, Manuel Zelaya, when he was president of Honduras from 2006 to 2009. When he was doing a lot of social plans and so forth, the United States oftentimes were critics of him and critics of him forming relations with countries like Venezuela. And the United States was actually quite happy when he got overthrown in 2009 by the Honduran army in a coup. The main thing that the United States seems to be opposing when it comes to Honduras and the objectives of Xiomara Castro is President Castro's attempt to want to get rid of the ZEDs, Z-E-D-E-S, the Special Economic Zones. To explain that, um, the, under President Juan Orlando Hernandez, he tried a project called Economic Zones where wealthy businessmen, including from the United States, could purchase a piece of land in Honduras and declare autonomous from the rest of Honduras. They would have its own tax codes, its own legal system, its own separate police force, its own area code, and everything. And a lot of the Honduran people opposed this, and they viewed it as losing their sovereignty even more. But American business people loved it. And when Hernandez did it, you know, he was congratulated, praised by the U.S. business community for doing these kinds of economic zones where people could just buy up any land they wanted in Honduras and basically run it themselves apart from the Honduran government. Now, Xiomara Castro has been fulfilling what a lot of the Honduran people want to do in ending this. And the United States is furious about it. The United States altogether is just seeming to try to work against Xiomara Castro and strong on her into doing what only America wants rather than what the Honduran people want, the Honduran people who elected her. No, the U.S. doesn't care about what the Honduran people want. They want Xiomara Castro to do what the guys before her did and do everything America wants. Pepe Lobo and Juan Orlando Hernandez did that. And they were hated by the Honduran people, but loved by the United States government. Which is ironic how then the United States, you know, ended up turning against Pepe Lobo and Juan Orlando Hernandez and their families. How the U.S. has put family members of Pepe Lobo, like his son Fabio, in jail. And Juan Orlando Hernandez and his brother Tony Hernandez are in jail in the United States facing life in prison. The U.S. is... Con Policies in Honduras are contradictory and make no sense, and they're all over the place. One of the people in the U.S. government who is very furious about Xiomara Castro is Congressman Mario diaz Balart. Not surprisingly, a lot of the Cuban Republicans, Cuban-American Republicans from Florida seemed to hate Xiomara Castro, but they did like Juan Orlando Hernandez. People like Mario Diaz-Balart and Marco Rubio, they were very good friends and allies with Pepe Lobo and Juan Orlando Hernandez, and they didn't care about all the drug trafficking crimes that those guys were doing. They didn't care about Juan Orlando Hernandez robbing the Honduran people robbing the Honduran state, using violent repression on protesters. No, Mario diaz Balart didn't care about that. But now he's angry about Xiomara Castro and threatening economic sanctions on uh, the Honduran government if she ends up going through with these plans to end the Special Economic Zones project. I made a video last year about how the United States has been working against 
Nayib Bukele in El Salvador. So now it seems like the United States, bipartisan, both Republicans and Democrats, are united in wanting to work against both Xiomara Castro in Honduras and Nayib Bukele in El Salvador. The United States views both of them apparently as a threat to its economic interests. Even though uh, Nayib Bukele is very popular in El Salvador and is improving El Salvador, and Xiomara Castro is attempting to try to do some necessary changes in Honduras, and the United States is just really budding in the way a lot. In particular, the U.S. ambassador in Honduras, Laura Dogu. She is always criticizing and trying to put her nose in Honduras's politics, including while Honduras is apparently trying to nominate new judges for the Supreme Court, Ambassador Laura Dulgo is present at these Supreme Court elections. And then you're like, why is a U.S. ambassador present there putting any input at all over another country's Supreme Court choices? So you don't see ambassadors from other countries coming to the United States saying, oh, this Supreme Court judge should be picked. No, that's ridiculous. So why should the U.S. be doing that in Honduras? You know, the takeaway to think about is the United States still treats Latin America, and in the case of Central America, like they own it. The United States does have a long history, as I mentioned, of meddling, intervening, and even invading countries in Central America to try to control everything, control the supply lines of bananas, control the supply lines of palm oil, and so forth. And the United States still c tries to treat Honduras like they owned it, that it's American property. The United States does not believe in Honduran sovereignty. And people like Mario diaz Balart and Ambassador Laura Dogu, people like Senator Bill Cassidy from Louisiana, they don't believe in sovereignty of countries like Honduras. They don't want countries like Honduras or El Salvador making their own decisions that are best for them. Only what's best for the United States and its economic interests in those countries. The U.S. doesn't care about sovereignty and wants to keep treating Latin America like they own it. And Latin America is tr wanting to just turn the page from that. And America just can't get with the times.